Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome back to our mini-series focusing on the clans on Tarkir. In this episode, we'll be covering the clan focused in black, the Sultai Brood. Brood. It already creeps me out. The first thing you need to know about the Sultai is that the majority of their ranks are undead. They have great skills in necromancy and utilize it extensively. They seek out battle with the other clans readily. Having a never-ending stream of dead bodies ends up being really useful if you can keep bringing them back to life. It's one of the reasons fighting the Sultai is a waste of time. Killing one of their soldiers just creates a new soldier. The idea of it's frustrating. The clan is made up of four distinct races. First is the Naga, half snake, half humanoid that represent the upper class. They're very wealthy through centuries of inheritance and eventual takeover of the Sultai clan from the humans. They have a lot of experience with poison, venom, and being super racist. They hate humans. To be more accurate, they think humans are actual trash, playthings that are meant to be used for whatever they want. This is why human zombies are often used for menial tasks. The Naga simply don't care at all about them. This brings me to the second and third races, humans and zombies. While the zombies are mostly mindless and pretty much do whatever they're told, because they're zombies, the humans are a bit different. They know that they used to rule the Sultai clan. From behind the Khan's back, the humans are attempting to contact their ancestors who once ruled the Sultai in hopes they would be able to help retake the clan for humanity. The last race is the Rakshasa, a powerful group of cat demons with the most dangerous magic available on Tarkir. We're talking damnation level magic here. The Rakshasa have the ability to resurrect and destroy entire armies on a whim. They also summon gigantic creatures that obliterate people and structures alike. It's said that to harness their power, a deal must be struck with them. While we don't know what it is exactly, the Naga must have done something truly awful to get the Rakshasa on their side. Aside from being truly terrifying and amazing at war, the Sultai are essentially the Las Vegas of Tarkir. Anyone who wants to see a show or experience true wealth goes to a Sultai pleasure palace. The clan has all the gold, money, and resources it could ever need to show Taurus a good time. It also helps that the Naga have mastered the art of close-range mind control. They can hypnotize, charm, and influence individuals to pretty much do whatever they want them to do. Humans in the Sultai also have this power, but they must use what is known as the Lotus Perfume, a poison that causes sleep, paralysis, and obviously death. The clan is run like a kingdom. The queen and Khan is Sidisi. She believes the Tarkir is meant to be ruled by the Sultai. She doesn't necessarily want to kill everyone, but more so wants them to do whatever she says. I'll use her words to explain it best. Direct quote. We appreciate the other clans maintaining their lands until such time as we can subjugate them. Their work will be rewarded when they are jewel-adorned servants in our palaces. See, not such a bad snake woman. She just wants to force you to be a servant. That isn't so bad, right? <laughs> Sidisi reigns over her kingdom from the Karu Temple, which is nestled super deep in a pretty dangerous jungle. The rest of the Sultai land is made up of vast jungles, swamps, river deltas, you get the picture. The citizens of the kingdom live in giant temple cities, necropolises, and pleasure palaces. That's seriously where everyone lives, in one of those three places. Oh, and by the way, across the Sultai's entire kingdom, undead are always just wandering around looking for outsiders. Throughout the entire kingdom, an army of dead people are monitoring the whole thing. It's the creepiest place ever. Well, that was one of the weirdest things I've ever read. The Sultai are legitimately disgusting in every single way. Although to be fair, this does shed light on why the Abzan are unhappy about them sharing borders. I probably wouldn't be too excited if a snake-leading undead army was parked right next door, so yeah, that makes more sense now. Anyways, what do you all think about the Sultai? What you expected? Do you like half snake, half humans? I most definitely am terrified of them. Let me know how you feel in the comments. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Kanza Tarkir spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.